Hey everyone. In today's video, I'm going to go over how to take the face off your machine and disassemble the face only. I'm sorry if I might have misspoke during the rest of my video, but we're not doing the whole machine. We're just going to take the face off and disassemble the face today in uh, the video. And it's going to be some still shots showing exactly uh, what I took off and in a sequence. So hopefully you guys will find this helpful. So I'm going to share some still photos of each step of the process to dismantle this machine's face. Okay, I'm just going over the face today. Um, basically this part here, it's what the foot, um, Go, sorry, it's what the foot goes into and um, this part, this was loose and it was causing the foot to feed uneven stitches um, right and left, not forwards and back. Forwards and back were nice and long and stitches to the right and left were short. And I did try to adjust the foot, um, but that didn't fix it. So I sort of went over the machine and figured out that, that this part was loose. Sorry, I don't know if you can see that. It's loose and that was the cause. So I went ahead and dismantled the entire machine and now it is making some very, very nice stitches. Um, you can see they look great top and bottom. And this thread here is Mauser Silk Rayon Floss, which is a non-stranded thread, which is almost identical to uh, Vintage 600D. I mean, it is identical, it's just that it's, it's a new type of thread. So the machine is now making beautiful, even stitches. So before I go into how to take it apart, I wanna give you just a little bit of help and background, and I'm, I'm not an expert by any means. There may be other people out there with years and years of machining experience. I am not one of them, but I'm going to tell you what works for me and what I think is a good way to not damage your machine. So the first thing I'm gonna say is a little bit about your tools. So these are long screwdrivers, okay? And these particular screwdrivers, especially these, the, the Weira, these two, the Weira screwdrivers, they are definitely a hollow ground gunsmithing type point screwdriver that's not your average household screwdriver. And then these two also work good. These long handled screwdrivers are really good for working on sewing machines. It is, uh, they, they do come in handy on the chain stitch machine, but I do use these a lot on my vintage machines like my um, vintage industrial machines. What you do wanna have for your chain stitch machine is a set like this. This is um, a Chapman, uh, gunsmithing screwdriver set and uh, hopefully you can read the number. This has inside of it, and I can't turn it upside down, but it has uh, a, a regular handle like a screwdriver and it has an extension so you can make it longer. And then the thing that I use most often, it has this small little ratchet that you can put your bits in. So with this ratchet, you can put a bit in it and you can get a lot of torque to turn uh, a screw that's stuck. So hopefully you can see that it, it tells you in or out on it so you know which way to put the blade in. And I, I use this a lot with anything that's stuck. But the key point is that hollow ground gunsmithing screwdrivers will not bugger up your vintage screws. So when you're trying to get a screw out, you really do not want to be using like a Craftsman household screwdriver because it will damage your screws. Okay, so that's that's the first thing with taking a machine apart. And um, if you don't have this, this set, you can get this on Amazon. It's maybe $50. It's really well worth it. And then of course, these kinds of screwdrivers you can find um, on the internet, okay? So um, I went to take this machine apart and I did, I pretty much had to take it all apart. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna show you how I did this 
but I'm going to use still photos. So you can go at your own pace and I'm going to put each photo in after this video so you can see. And in most of the photos, I either have my finger pointing towards the screw that I'm going to take out next or my finger or the screwdriver pointing to the part or the screw that I take off and it's going to be in sequence. So it's going to be in the removal of uh, all the parts in the head. And then if you want to, when you go to put it back together, just watch the stills in reverse. Okay. So I hope this helps you all and you can see that you can, in fact, you know, take apart a, a head and fix it. And um, there's really not a lot to this. You just take it apart, clean off your parts. I, I chose to not like polish them. I, I don't like to remove the original patina. I just like to make sure that there's no rust and there's uh, plenty of oil. When you're putting it back together, it's a good idea to put oil on all of your screw heads. Sorry. It's a good idea to put oil on all of your screw threads before you put it together so that in 10 or 20 or 30 years when someone comes to take it apart, it'll come apart more easily and you won't you know, have rust in your screw threads because oil helps prevent rust. Okay, so sorry for the long intro, but now I'm going to show you all the slides on how to take this apart and I might put uh, some arrows or something in the slides if I, if I think it's necessary to edit, but it should be pretty much self-explanatory. Just be careful when you put it back together, you know that you're careful with the alignment pins. And when you go to take it apart, um, the alignment pins might be a little stuck. So you might have to wiggle it. It just, it's not going to come right off because the face itself is going to be held in place with alignment pins and those are usually sticky. So after you remove the three screws in the face and you loosen the one screw on the gear that's holding the long shaft in, the face and the long shaft should slide out of your machine, but it may be stuck. All right, thanks for watching.